Who needs to play 37 other games? Why don't we just call it quits now? I said, we are top of the league. We are top of the league. Here we go, Gunners. Here we go. Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Please stand clear of the discussion doors. The next stop is Highbury Squad. My apologies. Let me just put my Rolls Royce away right here and bring in my Lamborghini back to the show. My podcast brother from another mother, Mr. Super Kill. Super Kevin Campbell. Bow! Squaddies! That's a bit more like it, where there's something riding on it. At ease, squaddies. At ease. Three points. Hit the like button now. Don't mess around. <laughs> Hit the like button. Hit the like button. Um, let me know how the sound is. I'm trying something new out with the mic. Kev says he hears me loud and clear. I hope you guys do too. Super Kev, Super Kevin Campbell. First game of the season as a player. How much of a relief is it before we get stuck into the nuts and bolts here to get that win? Uh, I think it's it's essential for us, Sophie, if I'm honest with you. Listen, you, you know, you could go through preseason, look good in preseason. The first game is always going to be tough and draining and, and a challenge. And we came through it. Um, I thought we came through it pretty well. And, you know, it was a, one of the toughest first games you can get. And I'm pleased we played Palace away because they were always going to give us a real good test. They're fit, they're strong, they're quick. And you know what? They just keep coming. You can see with the players they've got, they're going to give teams a lot of problems this season. And uh, I'm just so pleased we dug in there. Well, you know, you saw different facets of Arsenal today, which I'm really pleased about, Sophie. And I said yesterday, I want that clean sheet, Sophie. And we got it. Two goals. I said 2-0. End, end the show, innit? Did you say 2-1? Come on, Sophie. Don't mess me about. <laughs> I want that clean sheet, remember? So I ain't saying one. I wanted 2-0. Two, I, I wanted the clean sheet more than the two goals. I wanted us to win, but the clean sheet. And we dug in and we got it. Fantastic. I'm so pleased for the boys and, and Arteta and everyone concerned, all the fans. Well, there's already 200 of you in live chat. Someone said my sound sounds weird tell me why and i'll try and fix that if most of you hear me loud and clear and it doesn't sound weird please let me know um <laughs> there's a funky friday the happy friday feeling <laughs> listen I, I keep... <laughs> on, I can rub your hands <laughs> <laughs> rub your hands together everybody i'm telling you <laughs> Hold on, Kev. <laughs> Rub your hands, man. <laughs> Jenny, I will reveal what the background is all about. You'll find out about it in due, in due course. Right, let's get through the game, Kev. Let me get some stats for you right here. Yeah. Um, we had 10 shots on goals. So did the Eagles. <laughs> um, you're a little muffled and going in and out. Mm. All right, let's take this out then. Hold on. Mind your ears. Can you hear me now, Kev? Yep, can hear you. Yep, loud and clear. I can't hear you though. That's the problem. So, well, you know what? Problem. The squaddies might just have to suffer a little bit. Is, there you go. Sophie's having a bit of a technical issue. Can you hear me now? I could hear you both. Yeah, ones. I can't hear you. We're going to have to go with muffled. Yeah, go with. Or muffled. we unplug and we just go with the computer. How about we do that? Try it and see. How about that? Can you I hear can me? Hear you. I can All hear right, you. That's good. Yeah. All right, let's do that. Um, okay, Kev, 10 shots for Palace, 10 shots for the Arsenal, two shots on target for both, two shots on target, and we buried both. 
57% uh, 50, possession to 43, the home team beat us there. 554 passes, 430 for the Arsenal, 86% accuracy for the Eagles, 81 for us, 16 fouls by them, 11 fouls by us, two yellow cards for us, one for them, no red cards, two offsides for us, one for them. We had five corners, they had three corners, super Kevin Campbell. Um, the first half, talk about get off to a fast start away from home with a team that thumped us 3-0 last season. And let's uh, be real, they hadn't conceded a goal since February. They also won their last six games at home um, mm -hmm. at the end of last season. And within those five games, they had played Arsenal, Manchester City and Manchester United and hadn't conceded Kev. Tell me why. To me, this win, we were talking off air, explain to everyone why this win is significant with this particular team. Yeah, I, I just think Crystal Palace are a, a, a re, a, I think they're a good, really good premiership side, especially at home, Sophie. With that crowd behind them and with the type of personnel they have, they make life difficult for you. And even if, even if you do get your noses in front, they're going to keep coming at you because they have got personnel on the bench that can come on. Mateta comes on, who bullied us last season. You know, they've got the bodies. They've got the quality. They've got Zaha. They've got Eze. They've got some, some really talented boys. Ayu showed up as well today. He looked good. So, you know, they have got good players. They've got a good side. And do you remember we spoke about it yesterday, Sophie, where they're not going to fall into the trap of playing to, trying to play for us. What did they do? Anderson, they just kept knocking it behind us and knocking it up to Zaha and knocking it up to Edward. They kept asking us plenty of questions, Sophie. So they really tested us today. And um, do you know what? It was good to see we yeah. came through. Kev, there well, was I'm happy. What I'm happy about is that if we'd have played Fulham or Bournemouth in this first game, a lot of people would still be saying, eh, it's Fulham and Bournemouth. They're promoting. Still questions. Still questions. Still questions. Uh, you thump Sevilla 6 0, you beat Chelsea, you come into this. We're not getting too excited. All we're saying is this is a team that has really improved under Patrick Vieira. He's totally changed the way they play um, since the Hodgson chapters. Uh, they, they, the Decore looks like a really good player, Kev. Good player. Good um, player. Yeah. And like you said, I wanted to ask you in particular, because when I was on Sky Sports this morning, and you were too, we dominated today, Kev. Of course. Um, the Palace guy that I was on with, when I picked my 11, he said, oh, Sophie's picked Ben White salivating with Saha to play against him. And I said, oh, well, we'll see. Mm. And I said, he's come under fire. He's been, you know, I think unfairly targeted. He stepped into the Tomiyasu role again, Super Kev. Can I just say that barring a couple of moments, and of course his team protected him, but that's what you do at the back. You play as a unit, you step in. Uh, I thought he handled it really well. And I was really happy to see that if there was one player today... I didn't want to make a mega mistake. I wanted him to have an easy, solid game. Didn't have to be man of the match. It was Ben White. Talk me through it. Look, I, I think the, the the player he's playing against is one of the most dangerous players in the Premier League, especially one-on-one, -on -one, Sophie. Wilfred Zaha, to proper fullbacks, he turns them inside out. He destroys them. I thought Ben White stuck to his task today. I thought he was... I thought he was good. Obviously, he got caught a couple of times, which is going to happen, especially with the way Crystal Palace play because right. they hit Zaha early. They were looking to hit him early, get him 1v1. I thought he stuck to his task. And I thought he, he started getting better as the game wore on, to be honest with you. I thought he started getting his distances right. And you know what? He got helped by Saka a couple of times, which is what I loved. I love Saka coming back to help him first half. Saka coming back and doubling up second half. Saliba, it, when, he, when, he, when he got done over the top or down the side, Saliba coming across and helping him out. 
That's what it's all about, Sophie. Help your mate out. Absolutely first class. Because I know this much, Sophie. There ain't many players like Zaha in the Premier League who's as dangerous and as good as he is. So I thought Ben White done, done, done really well tonight. I really did, considering a lot of the time he was 1v1 with Zaha. Yeah, I don't feel like he needed to be the superhero, Kev. And I don't think he acted like the superhero. By the way, um, our show is powered by Zenith Coins. Uh, go to at Zenith Coins. They are the official licensed partner for the Arsenal Football Club. Uh, we are really proud to partner with them this season. They were sending us messages this morning, Kev. Yes. Uh, super excited about our partnership. Um, and we are really proud to be associated with them. 500 of you in live chat. This is what the coin looks like in real life. I've turn it, it round, so turn it round. Shoulder back as well. Go on, spin it. All right, there you go, Gunas. <laughs> So I had Listen. it with me when I was on Sky this morning. I had it with me when I was watching the game. Um, it's officially become my lucky lucky coin gifted by Super Kev. We've got some sexy ones coming in for the Highbury squad. We put the final touches on the design this morning. Super Kev came out with a nice touch idea. You will see what that all means. Right, back to the game, Kev. Let's get into the play ratings. But before we do, you mentioned Saka and Peter Drury and Lee Dixon, who we have on our commentary here. Mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about, we haven't seen too much of Saka going forward, but then they said exactly what you did. His discipline, this is the difference. Like some people would say, well, Jesus was on fire for maybe 20, 20, 25 minutes, but then really we didn't see too much of him. Can you please take me into the game as a player when the manager's talking about playing as a unit and the press and I think what Saka did was amazing. The commentators and Dicko were talking about it as well. And I think we saw the difference when you have a player like Jesus up front, Kev, who works so much harder than definitely Yang, but also works so much harder, but maybe contains the ball better than Lacazette. Yeah. Uh, look, I, I think when we take the lead, Solf, and Crystal Palace start adjusting, Slowly but surely, they start adjusting and start hitting us longer. All of a sudden, what they want is they want the pitch to become stretched. They want their midfield to be all over our midfield. And they want big gaps because without gaps, Zaha and Eze and, and Ayu and all these guys, Edward, they don't function good. They need space to, to operate in. But what did, what did we do? What did Jesus do? He was filtering back into midfield a lot of the time. There was times where we were clearing balls and he was picking the ball up, you know, in that midfield spot where we saw Lacazette do it a little bit. He was neck getting it, popping it off, and then he's, he's, he's sprinting up front. That is the type of work rate we need. Saka was very disciplined in what he'd done. Hugged the touchline when he needed to. Doubled up when he needed to. And especially first half, they were trying, not only were they trying to hit Zaha, when Zaha moved inside, Tyreek Mitchell was trying to go on the outside and uh, mm -hmm. uh, Saka had to track him a couple of times as well. So it's not always about when you have the ball. We know, Sophie, we've talked about it on here before. There's two sides to the game, with the ball and without the ball. And we had to be a lot more disciplined without the ball today. And we were. And the way... I don't know if anybody, everybody recognised for about, after, after about 70 minutes, it seemed as though we had nobody up front and we were like a compact unit. Jesus was, was, back, was back in the midfield. Odegaard was back in the midfield. Everyone was nice and compact. And it looked like Palace were just keeping the ball in front of us. That's fine. Normally we would have been rushing out and letting people play in between us and, and catching us, but we stayed compact. We had something to hold. We held it. And then when we made the necessarily adjustments, we go and get the second goal. And who is, well, who's, who's it come because of? Saka. Getting yeah. down the right-hand side, getting down past Mitchell and whipping a vicious crossing, which guy, he, he, he didn't... He had to get his head to it because he thought somebody was there and he turned it in his own net. 
if Saka doesn't get down there, Saka doesn't cross it, we don't get the second and we can breathe easy. So well done to the boy. They dug in, so They dug in today because it was a real good test. And Kev, can you just talk me through as well that I felt, of course, this squad is different. Going into the Brentford game last season, we all had some major concerns in terms of, you know, the same players being part of the squad. Um, and we looked underprepared. And maybe that's because, of course, we had players that just weren't engaged to play for the club. We looked really prepared, Kev. Uh, and I felt that you, you we off, off camera, we talked about match fitness and you were like, they're not there yet. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that a little bit because being prepared and being match fit are two different things, of course. But my goodness, it felt like every single player knew what their job was and executed their job very, very well. A stark difference to the start last season. Yeah. And, you know, my saying winds a lot of people up about, you know, it's a, it's the players and when they that's, cross the that's white the new line. That's the t-shirt that's coming, Kev. It's the players. It's the players. But, Sophie, when you see the players do their jobs, when you see the players covering for each other, when you see the, the effort, the work rate and the effort that goes in that, and, and went into this win, I thought it was really, really, really special for us. Considering you look at last year, like you said about Brentford, you know, Lacazette and Aubameyang had, 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 had the beer flu. You know, the players had to go to the ground in cars. It was a mess, so. And we got bullied, didn't we? We got bullied. There was no bullying us today. They brought Mateta on. They brought... You know, you had Zaha, you had Eze, you had Ayu. They went, in the end, they went 4-2-4 four, four to try and unsettle yeah. us in some way, shape or form. But there was no shaking us, Sophie. Our will is strong. We are, we're, we're more mentally prepared. And the players crossing that white line now know what it takes. And they, they delivered today. And, uh, you know, Akindeli's Campbell, another Campbell, Saliba, wow. We're going to get there. Let's get to <laughs> no, the I know, I know, but I'm just going to say, wow, what a debut. What a <laughs> debut. Uh, Aston's in the house. Sorry, I'm sweating like swine here, guys. It's so hot. Um, Aston is in the house. Sal <laughs> Saliba looked under-bothered. <laughs> Let's get to the play ratings. Um, okay, yes. Let's and do also, that. by the way, uh, where was that message that I wanted to to put up. Um, people ragging on Odegaard. I just don't get it, but we'll get there eventually. Okay. Chief like officer, Tammy, I haven't seen you in the house. There's 650. Whoa. Of you in live chat right now. Kev, tell them. What 325. The want. We want 50% minimum. Come on. 325 likes peeps. This is what we work with. We work with 50%. I don't want to brock no nets, but nope. if I have to, come on. If he has to, he will. Just but Vinny. come out. Just do yeah. Vinny. Vinny's fixing my mic. So I'm going old school mic here. Um, hope everyone uh, can hear me loud and clear. Uh, I think I've gotten the thumbs up from the crew. Right, Kev, yeah. you've got the players. Let's go. Ramsdale. Ramsdale, Solf. Um, uh, first player, number one, our new number one, Ramsdale. Um, I've got to say, he, he he put me a little nervous in the first first half Ed, where with his kicking. At times, one one hit Edward, and another time he nearly got caught on the ball, etc. So I was about, "What are you doing, Rambo?" But you know what? So he rectified that issue, uh, made two really good saves, and um, I thought he had, he ended up having a decent game. So and um, I, I, listen, you know, I I think clean sheets now are going to mean a lot more. To, to this back for, back five. I really do think they're going to mean a lot more than for this back five because we're expected to do things again now. We're expected to deliver. So the clean sheets have to mean more. And the fact of the matter is, first game of the season, yeah, he struggled a little bit with his kicking, as I said, Newman. But... The two saves he made were, 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 were really good saves. So, 
you know, Newman, whatever you give, I always give another two on top anyway. So <laughs> I'm going to give Ramsdale seven. I'm going to give him a seven, so. Okay. Because, you know, I, I, I just thought he looked a bit shaky at, at a couple of times, but his job is to save the ball. His job is to keep the ball out of his net. And uh, he done that, and uh, we got the clean sheet. So I'll give him a yeah. second. Yeah. So for me, there are two players who made two major mistakes that had the result gone a different way, everyone would be pointing the finger at them right now. We'll get to the other one um, at one at the next point. Ramsdale, that cockiness he developed, Kev, at the end of last season, he needs to curb this just a little bit. I know goalkeepers are crazy. Yeah. But he took two unnecessary risks at a time of the game where we were in total control. Yeah. And I'm sure Mikel Arteta is going to pull him aside on that. Having seen the first three episodes of All or Nothing, I love how absolutely pissed he was at letting in that goal. Um, with, which game was it? He came, comes into the villa, Aston Villa, where we Aston let in villa. that late goal and he's fuming yeah. about it. And I love that about him. To kind of overcome those mistakes and stay engaged in the game and still be alert. That second save he made especially was game-saving. For From me, Izzy. Ramsdale yeah. gets um, an 8.99 today, Kev. Nice Because one, he sorry. made saves that I think saved us, you know, from... At that point, if it from goes... From it being a lot more difficult, yeah. Yes, yes. From it being a lot more difficult. That's fair enough. So, okay, let's move on to Ben White. We, we kind of discussed him already, um, but I just want to reiterate some of the things. He's playing against one of the most dangerous players in the Premier League, Sophie. One-on-one, um, -on -one, he would cause any defender. He, you've seen, we've seen him destroy, you know, international fullbacks in the, in the Premier League, So, And I thought Ben White really stuck to his task today. And you know what? Ben White doesn't get a lot of flowers, does he? A lot of people are quick to have a go at Ben White. Um, but do you know what, Sophie? I thought he stuck to his task and got better. And so I'm going to give Ben White 7.5. I thought he was uh, instrumental in our clean sheet today. Because you know what? You know when that header went into Edward? Yes. Who was there with the challenge to just maybe put Edward off a little bit? Ben White. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and uh, like I said at the top of the uh, at the top of the show, I think people are waiting to get their darts out for Ben White. People are expecting him to fail. Uh, Terence, the Crystal Palace fan who I spoke to this morning, they were salivating, thinking Saha was going to Saha was going to destroy him. I felt like that that wasn't the case. It didn't happen. And you know what? Credit where credit is due. I actually think Kev of all the Arsenal players today, he was under the most pressure. Yeah, and yeah, probably right there. I'm going to give him an eight, Kev. That's fair. That's fair, Solf. That's fair. Um, he did stick to his task um, very well. And and you know what, Sophie? Here's the thing. People think that it's going to be detrimental, I think, if Ben White plays right back. I don't think it is. I think we've got enough firepower in our team now for Ben White to play there. I know when Tommy Arsu's fit, etc. Of course, he's a more of a recognised right back, but we don't need to rush Tommy Arsu back. No, why no would chance. We? we don't need and, to. And Kev, isn't again talk, like, part of part of playing, and especially when a player, and some people think he's he's playing out of position, and of course, traditionally he is, but he can play several roles. The fact is that his teammates did help him out today, but it's not like he failed miserably in the moments where his team helped him out. It was part of what I saw on the pitch, an organisation and a plan that was just executed perfectly because it happened on the right and it mm -hmm. happened on the left. We're going to get to Xhaka, and even though he was a bit of a bonehead at one point, there was one um, right in the, in the second half where he comes into the penalty box where he's covering at left back and he just puts his leg out, Kev. You know, it just felt like we were we knew what we were doing in every area of yeah. the pitch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we we doubled up and sometimes we had to triple up because they were overloading. Um, but we looked to be a lot more, as you say, a lot more regimented in our defending as a unit. And um, 
I'm so pleased to play Palace because they 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 threw everything at us. So let's be honest, they threw everything at us. And there ain't a lot of teams that are like Palace. There are not yeah. a lot of teams, and there are not a lot of teams that's got the flair and power and pace that Forest have. So yeah, you're cool. right. Who next? Zin next is Zinchenko, so Zinchenko. What a what a first half, what a first uh, 25, 30 minutes. Talk about composure on the ball, Kev. The ball loves his foot, just sticks to his feet. He's got great control. Um, I thought added a different kind of energy uh, on that left side. And again, just he's going to morph himself into the team. He's going to get better. Uh, the interplay, I thought, in the first 20, 25 minutes between him um, and the front three uh, was fantastic. I loved his debut. He gets a 7.5 for me. I thought he did a tremendous job. Super solid. 7.5. So, Sophie, I like... There was times where the game's going on in the first half, Soph, and I'm looking and he's in the centre of the midfield. It's very Man City, isn't it? Yeah. Dic he's dictating from the centre of the pitch, which, you know, normally your fullback will be way out and then when the ball breaks out... Next minute is the charge of the light brigade because they're picking up the, the second balls. Zinchenko just goes in there naturally. He's comfortable in there, Sophie. He's comfortable keeping the ball. Look, we had some stray passes. We, we all did have some stray passes because it's the first game of the season that you, you can't legislate for sometimes. But I like his control. I like the way he, he operates. I like his passing. And you know what? I like when he's going forward and also, Sophie, he set up, he got the assist for the goal. Great movement from the edge of the box for the corner. Pulls out, heads it right back in. And there was Gabby to make amends for his earlier miss. And uh, look, I I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give him 7.5 as well, Sophie. Uh, I like Zinchenko. I think he's a I think he's a winner. I really think he's a winner. And he's only gonna get better in this team. Yeah, so, I I agree. Some people in the chat are saying he faded in the second half, worried about his fitness. Uh, can we just talk about how you can have Kieran Tierney come off the bench when he's fit? You know, I mean, this is the point of us having a squad, guys. Let's not panic. Right, Kev? Sophie, what people have to understand is Palace went 4-2-4. Four, four. It got intense, didn't it? So you're, you're 1v1, so your mate can't help you anymore. Exactly. You know, and Palace were overloading us at times because uh, Nathaniel Klein was bombing on as well. Yeah, I you done him on the outside a couple of times, but it's a game of football. You got to get beat on the outside a couple of times. Needed fresh legs, and what is it, eighty-one minutes or whatever? We, we we've got Kieran Tierney who can come on and do a job for nine minutes. That nine minutes will do him the world of good. Absolutely. And, and this is this is what you do as a squad. You yep. use your squad to the best of your ability because there's going to be times where Tierney plays. There's going to be times where Zichenko plays. But the key is to do your job. And uh, so, right, let's move on. You ready for the? I'm going to go Gabriel first because I'm going to leave. I'm going to leave Saliba to the last of the centre half. <laughs> Gabriel, so gonna balls art. Thanks, Jason, as always for letting us use your wonderful art, uh, Gabby celebration here. Solid, Kev. Really solid again, did his job. Nothing too spectacular today. What I love about him um, today and the other person that we're going to talk about, other person player, you, Gabriel kind of went unnoticed. And I love that. You know, I was talking about Decore today at Crystal Palace because Fofana at uh, Lons was saying that he's a midfielder that just works in the shadows. And I love that terminology. And I felt like today Gabriel just worked in the shadows and his partner was the one that stole all the glamour and the spotlight and the headlines. And you know what? That is a perfect tandem to have. He gets a solid 7.5 for me today, Kev. 7.5 for you. I, I give I give uh, Gabby an 8, um, Sophie. I give him 8. I'll tell you why. He still, he still had to marshal. Mm. He still had to marshal. Saliba still had to talk to him, still had his own job. He's got a new left back beside him on the outside. And you know what? He done his job nicely. Nothing stupid. And we, you know, sometimes Gabby can, can get caught up, Carney, in, yeah. in, in a battle or, and lose his head. 
nice and calm, saw it out. When it had to go into Rose, it went into Rose. Like you say, worked in the shadows, but was still solid enough to keep a clean sheet. He gets an eight from me, Sophie. And uh, you give him 7.5. I give him an eight. And now we move on to the debut boy. Saliba. <laughs> yeah, he's he's checking you out, Sophie. He's looking over his shoulder at you. Where is she? She she moving off my shoulder. So I had what Rambo at the back. What, what um, do you say? I had Rambo at the back first because I felt his save, especially his second save, was like absolute quality. And you know, when you make a save like that after making a mistake, and you were solid at the back, you know, you're close to man of the match material. But wow, I don't know what to say. Other than it's like watching, he's a football artist. Mm. He reminds me of Rio Ferdinand. Don't come at me, guys, with the Rio Ferdinand that pisses you off on Twitter right now. When Rio Ferdinand was at his pomp, he's probably one of the most elegant, classiest, calm, calm defenders. Dare I even say, look, I'm just talking about style. I'm not saying he's there yet, people. He also has the composure of a Maldini or a Baresi. Mm. It mean, just seems, it seems effortless, doesn't it? Tor, as a player, you're in the team, Kev. This dude comes into the side and you see him play like that. What are you lot doing in the dressing room right now? What, what, what's hap what, what are you thinking? Well, you, you, look at, you look at everybody and you go, we've got one here. You, you know, the thing is, you see... So, a lot of people have said, you know, but it's only pre-season. You wait, you know, you wait till you get to the foot Palace because, you know, Palace are going to stretch you. Palace are going to ask all the questions. Sophie, I thought he was unbelievable. I thought he was really, really good today. And um, you could see they were trying to switch that ball to his side because they weren't getting any, any space out of Gabby. Gabby was solid as anything, nice and calm. So they tried to, to, to expose that side. And they even tried hitting balls over him. And there was one especially in the first half that came over his shoulder, so, and there was two Palace players there. And he just dealt with it. One touch, cleared it, cleared it out. I just thought, he's, he's excellent. He is excellent player. As a player, when you see a, a young player like that coming, you just think to yourself, Wow. If he, could, if he could just keep his focus, you know, don't get too caught up in what, what people say. Just keep playing, keep doing your job. We know he can do it because he's done it last season. But in the Premier League, if he could just keep doing that, Sophie, Sophie, we have got a hell of a player. I know. A hell of a player. Man you of know, the match today for me, man of the match on, uh, on Sky. What's your rating for him, Kev? Um, my rating for him is. I thought he was virtually flawless. Um, my rating for him is 9.5, so... Yeah, I was going to give him a 9. I and uh, was, Silu, I'm not going to calm down. I have been waiting. We've all been waiting to have a defender that excites us like this. And our good friend Stephen No Laguna was saying he's, he has that little touch of, like, that composure reads the game like a Tony Adams. It's we're not saying he's a world beater, but can we not just be happy and excited the for his debut? He could for be his debut, and his debut in the Premier League that we've been waiting for. I told Super Kev last season he will never play for the Arsenal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see, and you listen, and what isn't it nice that he, uh, he is playing for us? So, yeah. isn't it nice to see yeah. that he is we do have a plan and he is playing for us? Yes. There are 1,000 of you in live chat, okay? 1, five ton. Five ton. We want 500. Come on. Hit the like button, people. Hit it. Just hit it. Who's next, Kev? Next is Thomas Partey, Sophie, who I thought went about his business nice and quiet. You know, you talk about the shadows. He went about his business nice and quiet, kept knitting us together, First half, especially when we had to play between the lines and we had to play between them. we done that nicely. Second half, where they were coming on top of us, sat in that midfield. Nothing rash, Sophie. Nothing untoward. And again, 
instrumental, no injuries, just sat in there and done his job like we need him to solve. We don't need anything too fancy when we're in the lead. We just need him to do his job. And I thought he'd done his job. I'm giving Partey an eight. And that's been the problem for so long with our players. You know, the Kalasinachs, Mustafis, even Socrates at times, Bellerin, uh, Ozil, they just never did their job consistently and properly for the entire game. They did it in spurts. And what we've needed as Arsenal um, to be better on the pitch, Kev, is to have players that consistently do their job and stay mentally engaged until the final whistle goes. Yes. And I felt like that's the case. This is what we have. Now we've got to do this 37 more times, people. Hundred, <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. This is number one. And yeah. do you know what? It feels a lot better than it did last season sure after does. losing the first game. It feels yeah. better. So I'll what give do you give a 7.5. Fair. 7.5. Okay. Granite Xhaka. So you're going to give me your thoughts on Granite? Okay. Well, so I, thought, I, I thought he had a decent game, to be honest. There was Kev, a couple of moments, but I thought he had a decent a dive? Sorry? Did you think that was a dive, his yellow card? Yes, I, I, I did. I think he went down easy. I, he, he did get touched, but I thought he went down too easy. So, And as they were saying on, 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 the, on the, the, the broadcast, that referees, if they think his, the player's going down too easy, they're going to they're gonna play on. So. I, I, um, I don't know who you asking me or Kev, uh, but no, I think ain't me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I felt like at first I was like, "What is he doing there?" But then when I saw the replay, I felt like his momentum took him yeah. down. Yeah, yeah. Versus him looking for for the dive. To be fair, to be fair to him, but you know, uh, I thought again, solid job. Look, they did their job in the midfield and. Everyone's talking about what Crystal Palace were going to look like without Conor Gallagher. Um, you know, they brought in Decore, who I thought had a decent job. It was mm. definitely a good battle there, but I felt like we won that battle uh, in the end. And, you know, it gets a, a good seven for me. Didn't end up screwing up. After that yellow card, we're all like, oh, is this going to happen again at Palace? Yeah. Um, but it didn't, Kev. Uh, yeah, I, I give Xhaka a seven as well. I thought Xhaka showed a lot of restraint, which restraint and Xhaka... Usually are not in the same <laughs> sentence. But after he was booked in the first half, and look, they, they put us under some heavy pressure second half. So I thought Xhaka, you know, was very restrained, played his part, dug in. Again, without being spectacular, so this is the other thing. Without being spectacular, defended deep, did wasn't rash in the box or anything like what we know he can be. As I said, he showed a bit of restraint. I, 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 I'm going to go with you on this one. I'm going to give Jack a seven. So All right. definitely give him a seven. So let's go to Martin Odegaard, the captain, um, who I thought started off really well. And you know what, Sophie? I think he's... I, I'm going to say this. I think Martin Odegaard is too nice. Sometimes he gets in the... He gets in the great position where... Jesus has robbed the defence and he plays the ball into him he, in the box. Dig it! Dig it! And it frustrates... I don't know about you. It frustrates me because you know what? He's got great feet. He's got a good strike. Just hit. Go for goal. But he's trying to set um, other people up and make them look good. Just dig it! Martin, come on, Odegaard. Dig it! And... Have a word with him, Kev. <laughs> yeah, you know, because, you know, don't be afraid of it. Dig it. Um, again. What about works. his shooting, Kev? Because Tebow, what he's saying, it's the chat is on fire right now. And I get what people are saying. I don't think he was, I think he was, you, he had a very polite game, but he wasn't, he, an, hard. he wasn't, I, he needed to be more of an assassin. I could tell you this. He worked hard because he, he chased, he chased hard, let me tell you. He chased hard. But his key moments like that in the box, that, that make the difference. Because I know if that was Odegaard who passed it to Jesus, Jesus would have been shooting. So Jesus passes it to Odegaard and the goal's there. Shoot, dig it, just shoot. If you miss, you miss. Come on. But you've got to dig it. Do you know what I mean? You've got to dig it. So 
Look, I'm gonna I'm gonna give the captain tonight. I'm gonna give him a I'm gonna give him a six point five, right, Sophie? He worked really hard. He would have got a seven if he'd have shot there, right? He's the captain. He has to take that responsibility on for me. So I'm gonna give him a six point five today. I think that's a brilliant point, Kev. He's gonna have to really morph into this role of being a bit more aggressive. We know he's a nice fella. He's very, I mean, he's captain of Norway top, for a reason, player. right? Yeah. He's, he's, a, a he's, he's a good player. And, you know, he gets a six for me. Mm -hmm. Just shoot. Don't be afraid. Be more aggressive. And, you know, um, and I think the team then follows that aggression and that leadership from him. And if he's going to be captain, Kev, he's got to get stuck in more than that, man. He really does. He's got to take the responsibility on. And, and look, we're not saying he has to get stuck in like, like a party or like party or um, Xhaka or Gabriel no, or, or Saliba. stuck in that you're talking but, about. But it's the mental stuck in. Stuck in where, you know, you take, you take that responsibility on when you're one nil up. You're at Palace. Ball comes to you in the box. Jesus has done so great to 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 meet out the chance. He puts it into you. Dig it. If the keeper saves it, he saves it. But you know, yeah. let's have that aggression. A few a few folks are asking you about this, and I put Lone Star's comment up to to encapsulate everyone's. They want you to give him a little bit more credit for his tracking back. Did you? Did you? I've said that. I've said that. I said I he worked did. ever so hard. I did. I said he worked ever so hard. He pressing from the front and tracking back. Some really good play, good feet outside our own box, tracking back inside the box as well. Um, you know, he was the last defender when Zaha passed it to Eze for that chance. He played it inside Odegaard, who was like the kind of our last line of defense at, at that stage. So we're not saying he doesn't work, not at all. But yeah, we're, talking Kev, about the, we're talking about the Arsenal captain here, guys. Yeah, exactly. Um, can I ask you real quick before we move on in a nutshell, can you teach the killer instinct or does a player have to have it? No, you, no, it's not a matter of killer instinct. It's just shoot. Killer instinct. We're not asking him to be a killer, so, but we're asking him when the opportunity comes. I think there was the a couple of times today he could have shot. One in the, one in the first half. And definitely that one in the second, he could have shot. So if you're okay. captain, take on that responsibility, Martin. Don't, don't, don't be afraid. Take it on. All right. Who's next? Um, Bukayo Saka, I've got so who um, you kind of touched on earlier on. Yeah, after I after I spoke with you a little bit, and I was I was at times I felt he was a bit of a weak link in, in the connection up front. Um, and sometimes I still feel like he's doing too much. However, with that said, um, his work rate and what he was doing uh, to support Ben White, like we said at the top of the show, was great. He gets a seven for me today, Kev. And in the end, like you said, he put us in a position to get the goal, albeit deflected and an own goal in the end. It doesn't matter how it goes in. It goes in and you win. I'm, I'm looking for him, however, to be better than this as the season goes. Yeah, 100%. Again, the first game, and this is why I was so pleased we played Palace. Because, do you know what? You could play a, a weaker team and blitz them. And then you get to play against a team like Palace and get upset because all of a sudden, your mind, you've, you, you haven't had to do it from the start. Palace asked questions. Tyreek Mitchell was, wasn't just defending. He was yeah. taking Saka. All the way. Zaha was meaning Saka had to double up and go back and, and, and do some of the dirty work that we need him to do when we're not on top. And do you know what? He done it without question. I thought he I thought he worked ever so hard. I'm going with you so far. I'm gonna give him a seven. And uh, because not only for the work rate, but he kept going. In second half, we started to see him open up a little bit more on Mitchell. There was one where he, he he got in and had a right foot shot that just that went past the post. Fair enough, he tried, but that final one late on where you know he's, he's he got the ball and he's 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 put it on his right hand side, which ain't his his 
his strong side, but whip the cross in and we get a goal from it. So, yeah. an own goal from it. So, fair play to Saka. Definitely. Good work, Ray. And uh, I'll give him a seven as well. And Kev, as Kay Marlon says here, he he work, he doesn't go hiding even if he's not having a good game, does he? I, I agree with Kay Marlon. He works hard and he's tracking back. Was he, on never he, hide. he never hides. He doesn't hide. He never hides. He never hides. He never hides. And you know what? He could be having a poor game, but he will always try. That's one thing about him. He's a trier. So I gave him a seven. George okay. Sullivan gave it, what was it? Sorry, somebody just gave him a 7.5. Yeah, um, it's, it's, I think we're on on track with most of the squaddies in the chat. Yeah. 1,072, Chief Life well, Officer, give us the count. Super care. I, think we, I think we hit 500, but we need a bit more now if there's 72 more. Got to go sevens now, Kev. Got to go right. sack a seven. Yeah, seven. Sack a seven. Um, Gabriel Martinelli, our match winner. So what do you, what do you give Gabby? Okay, so Maya, where is he? Hold on, no, there he is, my little angel in pink. <laughs> Notice, guys, my theme, you're going to get used to this this season. Whatever we're wearing, those will be the picks. Okay, after that miss, I text you right away and I'm like, oh, I hope it's not going to be one of those days. Yeah. But like Ramsdale, who made a mistake, stuck in the game, made two great saves, Martinelli, Stuck. This is what I love about him and Saka. They never give up. They never go hiding. They always graft. And I just thought that, you know, we're looking for him to score more goals this season. He gets started with a goal. This is the biggest challenge. Everyone wants him to get stuck in a little bit more. I thought some of his touches with his feet are just exquisite. I thought he and Zinchenko linked up beautifully on that left side. And I'm not being funny, he scored with a header. And he's, yes. you know, and that's a rarity, really. He's in uh -huh. where it hurts, isn't he? He's in right in the centre where it hurts. He gets an eight for me, Kev. I just feel like he's going to get better and better. And there's something about these two guys, Saka and Martinelli, that are clearly loving playing with Jesus already. He yes. gets an eight for me. Yeah, Sophie, do you know what? I thought his, I thought his all-round game was a lot better today. A lot better. Receiving the ball, linking play, linking up with Jesus. There was times where Jesus came wide and Martinelli was in the centre, pressing. I thought he'd done really well. Obviously, the chance came and you think you've got to bury that, you know, Gabby, you've got to bury that. But he weren't to be denied, so this is a striker's lot. Some of them you're going to miss. But the key is, when you get the next chance, put it in the net. And it was a nice, cute header back across the keeper. Keeper couldn't keep it out. I give Gabby, I give Gabby an eight. Um, I thought he had a really good game today and um, I'm pleased for him, Sophie. Me too. Because you know what? I'm really pleased because he needed that. He needed that today. Because, you know, pre-season where, especially the last game, Sevilla, where he put it on a plate for Eddie and what he could have probably done with the goal. Today he gets his goal and well Kip, played. He's stuck. I would it. love for you to go in and do a speech to all of these attacking guys and like do the selfish speech. Because, you know, Mo Salah gets really criticised sometimes. Oh, he's too selfish. Were you kidding me? How can you even rag on Mo Salah for being selfish? I mean, I don't understand. To me, that's loco. Venga de la Venno, as we say in Greek. I don't get it. Yeah, but you know what, Sophie? The, 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 the difference is this. You've got to know when the right time to pass is and the right time to shoot. Because if your mate is in... A goal scoring, a, a better goal scoring uh, position than you. And you've got to give it him. So he, he gets the definite goal, like he did with Eddie. Now, that chance that he had in the first half, there's no way he's passing that. He's got to, he's got to, he's got to look to score there, hasn't he? That was that was on a plate. So uh, I understand mm -hmm. these guys have to be ruthless, but they've also got to be smart. And you know. Do you know, probably the best team for that was the Invincibles. They used their brain so much. They gave it to people on a plate because they knew it's a definite... If I pass it to him, it's a definite goal. That's smart football, Sophie. But um, Martinelli done the business today. And I really thought he, he had a good all-round game. I really do. He had a good all-round game. And I'm pleased for him today. Um, Okay. Good I win. just wanted to ask you that one about selfishness because yeah. 
you know, I mean, you've had some incredible partnerships, with, you know, Wrighty, Ferguson, Van Hoydonk. Um, hey, so do you, do you want to know something funny? Yeah, always. Here's a, fun, here's a funny one for you. So, obviously, I get dropped out of the Arsenal team. George Graham puts me out of the team when Wrighty comes. He says, me and Wrighty are too similar. So I, I then watch Smudger a lot and I start working on my game. And it's funny, when I get back in the team, we start scoring, but Wrighty scores at a, a higher rate because he's always in the right position. So, so it's easy to give him the ball. And a lot of those games, Sophie, if you if you get to see any of the games, you watch it, you, you get the ball in the box and right is just there. It's easy to give him the ball because he's always in the right position. Positioning was amazing. Yeah, he's always in the right position. And you know, if you give him the ball in there, he's going to bury it. So you give it to him. <laughs> was he a bit of a goal hanger then, Kim? No, no, it's not goal hanger. Not no, goal no, hanger. Not in training, he was a goal hanger. <laughs> in training, he was a goal hanger. And you know what? <laughs> Martin Keown and him used to fight in training because he was right. You're a goal hanger. Oh, oh, you know, sod off, Martin. It don't matter because he used to celebrate even in training, and they used to scrap. It was funny. Oh, I love it. That's it was brilliant. funny. Absolutely right. Brilliant. So anyway, that's enough of that. That's old time, yeah, right? Leg that. As you said, Matthew, that was that was old time, and, and people say brilliant. legends. Let's look at Gabriel Jesus today. Who do you know what, Sophie? I thought we saw virtually everything from him today. We saw. I'm just going to let you talk about him. Tell me what you saw. We saw. We saw hold up play. We saw good feet. We saw good movement. We saw devilment in the box without which got blocked. We saw tenacity in chasing defenders, winning the ball off defenders, showing his, his class by winning the ball and then picking the right pass to Odegaard. We saw his work rate second half where we actually came back into the block and he left being a, a, a number nine up top and he came back and he was working hard in that in that midfield, he showed so many things. The only thing we didn't see is a goal, but the goal's coming. You know the goal's going to come for him because he's so dynamic. He makes a difference to this team, Jesus does. He Kim, really you, does make it. Can you also, real quick, just um, the difference between him, Aubameyang, and Lacazette. Lacazette was a hard worker, but the, the end product just wasn't there towards the last few months, was it? Aubameyang had all the talent in the world, but if he's not scoring, he doesn't didn't offer the team very much. This is the striker that Arteta has been wanting for all of the reasons you just said. No. Yeah, I, I think I think the the funny thing about you know we talk about partnerships, so. And that's why Lacazette and Aubameyang really gelled because Lacazette was good at one of the things, hold up, play and link. And Aubameyang's really good at hunting the space. But we need an all-rounder. The way we play, we need an all-rounder. We need somebody who can not only get hold of the ball, not only be a threat so the defence have to account for him, not only someone who is going to harass the defence, but someone who actually knows how to move and where to move and where to be. I mean, there were some fouls going on against him in the first half, which the referee let go. I'm like, yeah. what are you doing? You know, he was getting fouled left, right and centre. I can't wait to see him at the Emirates in, in, in the first home game of the season at the Emirates because the guy's an absolute nightmare to play against. So he's fit, he's strong, he's lively, he's got great feet. And if he would have scored that that dribble in the first half where he nutmegged somebody on the edge of the box, so nice. shimmy, got in and it got blocked. That would have been, that could have been the first, that would have been one of the goals, one of the contenders for goal this season. But he's just a handful. He's a, he's a brilliant player. And you know what? 45 million is cheap. Cheap, cheap, cheap money. I give, I give Jesus a, an eight today. I thought he was, I thought he was really good. And he, make, he makes a real difference to us, Sof. He yeah. really does. Yeah, I thought. He, I'll give him an eight as well, Kev. Lovely, lovely. Um, so, Inketia and Tierney came on. Sixes. 
Um, yeah, they didn't get a lot of time, so they yeah. get sixes. I, I agree with you there. Sam became on right at the end. We just give him a six anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and what do you give the manager, So. Okay, people, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to give the gaffer a nine, and here's why. All right? First game of the season, so important for us to walk away. It was a can't-lose game, in my opinion. Yeah. I. I, even though I picked us to win 3-1, when we did our prediction show with uh, Gianni Judges and Harry and Tom and Dan, I thought that we would get a point out of this game because of our history with Crystal Palace. We got thumped by them and embarrassed 3-0. Um, you know, beginning of last season was absolute catastrophe to have the team this organised, this set up, to have everyone knowing what their job is, to be this cohesive, um, he gets a nine. He did a really good job organising the team today, made the subs at the right time. And look, whatever's happened with Saliba down the road between them, I don't know what it is, but the dude's playing like, hopefully he stays, Kev, because that that's a, that's a player we're going to want here for a long time. So again, when he, I've criticised him for his man management of players, but to have him come in and be this integrated into the squad and have that performance day one, he gets a nine. Credit where it's due. So I I I, I second that. Look, he's um, you you rightly said that you know the pressure's on and the pressure's on to deliver, which is fair and uh, it's right. Um, there's a lot of pressure at Arsenal anyway, but you still got to deliver. You still got to prepare the team, and now he seems like he's got the team going the way he wants. He's got certain players in. You know, Sophie, even though we done well today, I still want a couple more minimum. I still do. But do you know what, Soph? This was Arteta's 50th win, league win for Arsenal after 98 games in charge. And it makes him the second quickest manager to reach, Arsenal manager to reach 50 top flight wins. Is that after Graham or Wenger? After Wenger, who who done it in '94. I mean, that's so. Impressive. You know, he's he's he's. Listen, we're not saying he's Wenger or Graham. We're just saying <laughs> that you know, <laughs> you know that it's it's still a good stat for him to have. We kept a clean sheet, Sophie. We got Saliba back. We look solid. We look more aggressive. We looked like we could have blown Palace away if they weren't so strong. Um, we had chances, could have taken them. Game could have been over in the first half, so could have been over. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we missed out a couple of chances, didn't take them, but we dug in there and we came out two nil winners. And you know what? If you'd have asked us yesterday, would you take two nil at Palace? We would have said, oh, for sure. We take the clean sheet and the two goals. Thank you very much. Um, Lin Lindani, you're right. Arteta nine clean sheet. I go for that. Arteta nine. I I second you on that, Sof. And uh, listen, congratulations to Mikel Arteta, fifty wins uh, as Arsenal Very manager. Well. And and what not, what do you give the Arsenal fans, Sof? Because Kev, they were incredible. Again, again, incredible. Our, yeah. Our away fans, club culture is spot on now. Pani, Mezaratis, bravo, well said. They get, Kev, right, for me, a, a 15, all right? <laughs> love it, love it. And I'll tell you why, Super Kev, the song, Zinchenko, Co, <laughs> always believe in your soul. No. You got the power to know. No. <laughs> always believe in. Zinchenko. Zinchenko. Oh, cool. Yeah, fantastic tune. Fantastic tune. I Listen, love them. They're brilliant. If you say 15, 10, 15, 20, you could go in. anything 10 and above is, is fine. I thought they were they were I thought they were awesome. Yet again. Um and yeah, and, 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 and singing Vieira. Listen, we love Vieira. We we owed him one, didn't yeah, we? We, we owed him one, but we still love him. We still love Vieira, of course. He's uh, one of the legends of our football club. And uh, the Gooners, the away fans doing us proud yet again, Soph. Great away support. 
we drowned out the, the Palace fans for most of the game. And uh, you know what? When it really mattered in the second half, they, they pushed on again with the support. Absolutely brilliant. And uh, hey, Sophie, we got more points in one game than we did in three, in three, <laughs> three games. In three games last season. Here we go. It's a great point, Kev. Absolutely brilliant. And you know what? I like, I love how we sang the Vieira song after we went 2-0 oh, up. And we after, knew yeah, we after we give them a couple of slaps. Vieira, yeah, we could sing to you now. It's done. But showing respect to our invincible captain. Amazing stuff. Brilliant. Look, three points. Great performance. I thought we controlled most of the game. Dominated at the very beginning. Um, you know, we laid down a marker. And you and I said, I saw, like we said on on our on Sky today, like this is the game to lay down the marker. Yeah. Can't come away from this game negative. Absolutely not. And here we go. It's Friday night. Now we get to watch the whole weekend, Kev. And do you know what? A squad is gooners. So we can, you can enjoy the whole weekend now. You can sit back. With a, a cold one or whatever you drink or, you know, whatever you're doing. And you know what? You could just... Top of the league. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, listen. We've we done our job. We've done our job. Now okay. everybody else can go through the pain tomorrow and, and Sunday and, and stuff like that. And, yeah. and see how on. We've done our job. We kept a clean sheet. And you know what? That our, our high... Our high-end Bentley might just be turning into a Rolls Royce this season. What is the highest echelon of that? I mean, is it a Bentley? Is it a Rolls? I don't know anymore. Like, there's no. So know. there's a no. There's a, a proper high-end Bentley. Is the Mulsanne um, oh, okay. high-end, right. beautiful four-door? You know, Coachworks. Backwards, right? Goes backwards. The door no, goes... no. That's that's the that's the Rolls Royce okay. with the suicide doors, right? But, right. Um, so that yeah, that does that. But the the Mulsanne Bentley is just like best bulk. It's the business costs as much. It virtually costs as much as a a roller, but it's I'm, more of a I'm driver. It. It's more of a driver. But no, not a Bugatti, Mark. No. Not a Bugatti. No, Martinelli's a Bugatti. A Bugatti. Ma Martinelli and them boys. They're the they're the wizards. They're the ones yeah, who yeah. keep going. But this is like. Effort, like effortless, effortless, comfort and class, but got the size and strength of just, you don't even want to look at me. That, <laughs> one of them ones. You don't even want to look at me because I've got the power, but I've got the elegance as well. Love it. <laughs> Arnie, 1,026 and 649 likes. 649 likes, Arnie, is good. Right. Way right. over 50%. I love that. All right. On the way out, if you have not hit the like button, okay, please hit the like button. It's been a good day. And especially hit the like button if you love what you saw from Saliba, if you were happy Martinelli scored, if you loved Rambo's second save, if you thought Mikel Arteta did a great job picking the team. And, of course, if you love Super Kev, Super Kevin Campbell, we're lucky to have him on today's post-game show. And um, that's about it. I don't think we've got anything left, Kev, unless you have a wrap that you want to give before well, you let so, us go. You know what I'd like to say? I'd like to say um, I remember the start of last season and how difficult the Brentford um, post-game show was. Could you remember? <laughs> it was it was so difficult. I don't think I've ever gone back to watch it. And I, I remember I was I was working on I was working the Saturday and I'd done it from a hotel in London. And uh it was painful, real painful. But you know what? So I feel so much better today, don't you, Soph? Yeah. I feel better. So yeah. do you know what, squaddies? Enjoy it. Enjoy this one. Wherever you are in the world, make sure you enjoy it. Listen to the post game interviews, revel in it. Because you know what? It's us against the world this season. And never forget. Check out Zenith coins as well, because those who have them, go and give your coin a rub. So, where's your coin? It's go right and give you. Go and be... give you the lucky cut. Go and give that coin a rub, because you know what? 
I think that's going to be a, I think that's going to be a lucky thing for us. Real lucky. It's in association with our club, people. Official, official, official. It's and we it, love Arsenal's that. Arsenal sell this coin, so it's official with Arsenal. So go and get your coins. And you know what? You know what we should do? We should get everybody who gets the coin so to do the pictures. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. We're going to do a, mo a, a mosaic. Montage. A montage yeah, yeah. of, of everyone. Brilliant. Yeah, brilliant stuff. All right, Kev. Uh, we're going to be back for Monday Madness. Yep. Um, and in the meantime, everyone, enjoy your weekend. Kev's going to take us out. All right. Listen, squaddies, thanks for joining us post-game. We – they – you know why they picked us to go on a Friday night? Because they thought we were going to mess up, don't yeah, you? Yeah, they did, Kev. You we know that, don't you, Squiddies? They fought Brentford last season. Let's give them Palace. <laughs> but you know what, Mikel and the team, the boys went out there, crossed that white line and done the, done the business. You can see it's the players. So, Squiddies, we love you. Have a great time wherever you are, wherever it's morning, noon, or night. Squaddies, at ease. We love ya. We love ya. Mind the gap between the train and the platform. Please stand clear of the discussion doors. The next stop is Highbury Squad. The Highbury Squad is powered by Zenith Coins. Support the future, treasure the past. Official licensed partner of the Arsenal Football Club. Follow at Zenith Coins across all social platforms.